This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. This in the Snickers hot seat within the BetMGM studio is Titans president and CEO Burke Nihil back on the OTP for you, the OT people. Welcome. Great to be here, Mike. I did not realize this was the hot seat, the Snickers hot Snickers seat. Snickers hot seat right there. Uh, Remember, everything's here. sponsored. Yeah, I mean, everything. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> it works out. Yes, that <laughs> works out well. We're glad you're here. We're excited. Players are back and training camp is underway and we're getting rolling. But there are topics that we need to hit because there's going to be plenty of time for football starting in the next couple days. Sure. So we got some things that we want to throw out to Burke Nihill that we think you're interested in. And Amy Wells, ladies first, lead us off. Well, please. thanks, Mike Keith. I think we should start with one of the more exciting events that's on kind of the immediate horizon. This weekend. Yeah, and that's Back Together Saturday. The Titans are hosting a huge event at Nissan Stadium on the 27th. Saturday. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this event. Tell me about what fans can expect when they show up. Yeah, excited to bring this back and, and do it better than ever. It's, uh, it's basically a, a Tennessee Titans festival at the stadium. So uh, people coming onto campus are going to see uh, kids events. They're going to see your kind of typical tailgating games. Uh, there's discounted concessions, face painting, T-Rack and cheerleaders wandering around uh, and, and hanging out with fans. Uh, but most importantly, uh, there's going to be Titans football down on the field. Uh, opportunity for fans to, to get a first glimpse at uh, the new players, the new coaching staff, watch them run around and have a, uh, have a practice, autographs uh, after the game. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a fun event and excited to bring it back. Did you say it's been th since 2019? I didn't say that. I'm so glad you did. So it's been five years. Why is this the right time to do this event Saturday at the stadium? Yeah, it's, you know, honestly, a little inside baseball. We had a logistical challenge for years. It's, it's, it's hard to line up the football calendar uh, with a time that's going to be uh, open at the stadium and, and be the right time to, for the team to be preparing. Uh, we've, we had done this thing in the past, and uh, we, we hosted an IndyCar race for, for three years, and uh, that race was awesome for the city. Uh, we, we had believed for a while we might be able to coexist with an event like that with the race, and it just wasn't able to, to be done safely. Uh, so the IndyCar race has now moved out uh, to the super speedway, and this, this opens up the calendar again for us. And, and Coach Callahan couldn't have been more excited about making it work and, and getting the team over there to have a close encounter with the fans. So let's say again, this Saturday, 11 a.m. at Nissan Stadium, TennesseeTitans.com slash training camp. Fans can claim their tickets for this Saturday's open practice at Nissan Stadium. TennesseeTitans.com slash training camp. Yeah, and those, those tickets are free. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, need to point that out. Yeah, yeah. it's and the best part. It's, uh, we, we just we want to have a, a, a sense of uh, you know, how many fans to expect to, uh, uh, that we can be hosting. Uh, we, we've had well over 10,000 fans that have already claimed their tickets, so it's going to be a wow. great event. We're so excited to see everybody out at Nissan Stadium because there's so much excitement around this team right now. And a lot of that is thanks to Brian Callahan and his new coaching staff. As somebody who was intimately involved in the hiring process, how gratifying has it been for you to see him really bring to fruition some of the things that I'm sure you guys talked about back in January? Yeah, I, look, I think uh, anytime you're, you're going through an interview process, uh, you, you really hope that the things that you get to know about somebody over the three, four, or five hours that you're interviewing uh, someone uh, come to bear. And it's all that much more important when you're talking about the head coach of a football team. Uh, just sets the tone almost more than anybody else in the building. And uh, so we, we set out looking for a head coach, focusing on certainly skill and experience of that head coach, uh, philosophy, uh, attitude, uh, really trying, you, you, you so badly want to get a 10 out of 10 in that position. And uh, Brian, I would say from our initial research, uh, from the very beginning was at the top of the list of, of who seemed like would be the best fit for what we were looking for uh, as a head coach. And I think from the first meeting, uh, he, he started with that lead and, and never lost that lead. Uh, you know, ran 
from the beginning was, was smitten with them. Everyone else in the, the interview committee uh, really appreciated Brian. And what has been really gratifying, uh, to your point, is that I think Brian has actually proved to be better than we thought he was during that interview process. And, and based on the, the references we had gotten, uh, he is a genuine person. Uh, he sets a, a great tone. He works so well with, with Rand and Chad, his coaching staff. I mean, this, this is an even more attractive place to work than it ever was before because of Brian. People want to work with Brian. Uh, the players want to play for Brian. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to actually, I know he would say the same thing, excited to actually see that uh, come onto the, the field here uh, in training camp and, and, and during the season. I mean, that's what really matters the most. He would tell you the same thing. But in terms of uh, Brian Callahan, the coach, the person, uh, he has absolutely exceeded expectations since he showed up in January. Amy made a really insightful comment last week on the OTP about Brian about the fact that she had the opportunity to go to his home in Cincinnati and that he is no different when they sat in his home that day in January than he is to this point. And I thought that was, was really telling and, and that's been my experience too in just the dealings I've had with him. From your experience, Burke Nihill, what is something different about him that you didn't know that you that you really enjoyed getting to know about Brian Callahan through this process. Yeah, let me let me first respond to what you said the first time. Though. The word consistent came up a lot when you talked about Brian, and I think that is an incredibly important part of being a head coach because you're going to have ups and downs, right? You're you're going players want a coach who is consistent, right? Treats them consistently, is steady on a Monday after a bad game, right? And and you absolutely see Brian Callahan in any environment is the same guy. Right, and that's, that's huge. The thing I would say uh, is different about Brian than I expected. I'm gonna say it's different, but I, I, it's not that I didn't think this about him. Uh, he's really, really cool. Uh, his taste in music, uh, <laughs> his, his taste in uh, vacations and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I, was, um, I, I was talking to, to somebody from uh, the, the music industry and uh, they mentioned something about Kings of Leon and Brian overheard it and he's a giant Kings of Leon fan. And Zach Bryan was in town and I was, uh, went by and visited Brian. Uh, he was there with his family and his kids were talking about, you know, this is the song that you play on the, on, in the car all the time, dad. He's a, he's a really, really cool and interesting guy outside of the football. So a lot of new faces on this roster and uh, Titans fans getting to know them very well. Coach Callahan, coaching staff, new people all the way around. But I wanna talk about Rand Carthon and what he's been able to do sort of holding all of this together. What is it about Rand Carthon that allows him to connect with so many different people so easily and that he's been able to show it in this way in this particular offseason. You hear about Rand all the time that he's a people person. He, uh, he has this exceptional EQ, emotional quotient. Um, and it, there really is this superpower where he wants to understand people and, and wants to get to know them and connect with them. Uh, and and I, I, this offseason, you've seen it in two really meaningful and powerful ways, I think. The first way was, oh, building the coaching staff. Rand was a massive asset in recruiting coaches who were wanted by several other teams to come to, to the Titans. It starts with Brian Callahan, but it proceeds to Brian's staff. I mean, Denard Wilson was wanted by just about every team that, that had a defensive coordinator opening, and he chose us. Uh, and I, I do not uh, discredit in the least bit that, that, that Rand Carthon was a huge part of ultimately selling the Titans as a great place to come and work as a defensive coordinator. But then he really gets to know those coaches and understands what makes them tick, what types, types of players they want. He, he, he's curious. He asks questions under, wanting to understand whether it's the you know, measurables or the specific intangibles that they're looking for sp uh, position by position. Um, it, he really just took the time to get to know those coaches to help build a roster that they were going to be excited about playing on the field. Then he, he puts that to use to ultimately uh, convince players who are uh, free agents that this is a good place to work too. And in the same way, there were several, uh, several stories that emerged from this offseason where there was a player that was wanted by several teams 
and uh, Rand was a, a huge difference maker in recruiting that player. Calvin Ridley is, is maybe the, the top of the list. I think uh, that story's been out there a few times that uh, Rand jumping on the phone with Calvin Ridley as he was considering other options. Uh, it was a really, really big deal for him feeling comfortable uh, to, to come here. And they, you know, they, they weren't just talking ball, right? Uh, Rand was connecting with him as, you know, where he grew up and, and, and really getting to know him personally. And by the end of that conversation, Calvin Ridley felt great about uh, signing a contract here and, and bringing his talent to Nashville. So we've built a roster, we've built a coaching staff, and it seems like there's a lot of great things going on within kind of our football core. But there's a little secret sauce, too, and I think that's Chad Brinker, the Titans president of football operations. He has done such a good job of providing cohesion and leadership down there. That has to be something that has been really impressive to you, Burke, because he's only been in this role for a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, Chad, To no confusion, Chad's a football guy. Uh, Chad was a great football player uh, in his own right uh, and, and went into scouting uh, at, a, at a young age and is, is a great scout. Um, but Chad also just has something that I think is pretty unique for, uh, for the football business. And he, he just has this different understanding of, of leadership and how to put disparate parts together to, to create one unit, which is incredibly important in today's NFL. I mean, Mike, you've, you've been with this team forever and, and the evolution of the football operation, uh, smaller coaching staff, smaller scouting staff, smaller video staff, data and analytics didn't exist. And uh, it is becoming more and more complicated. It's, it's a, it's, there's a lot of people that have to all be on the same page doing their jobs in a way that fits the pieces together so that we're, we're all rowing in one direction. And Chad, I mean, he has an MBA from Northwestern. Uh, he studies Navy SEALs uh, and, and how they ultimately uh, go and, and, and attack the things that they attack. He, he brings this different sensibility about him, but at his core as a football guy. So he understands you know, how all this needs to ultimately put these pieces together to be great at football and to build a sustainable championship team. All right, let's talk about our friends at Pinnacle for just a second before we continue with Burke Nye Hill. Open a Titans checking account with at least $100 and a reoccurring direct deposit by August 2nd. It's next week. Can it, you believe it? Uh, time is ticking. Man. August 2nd, and you could receive two tickets to five home games. Details at titansbanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy, member FDIC. As we talk with Burke Nihill, we're going to turn from the football specific to new stadium, tickets, all of these different sorts of issues. But... The number one question that I have gotten from Titans fans in regard to this very broad topic is, what is Titans House? <laughs> I'm hearing about Titans House. Do you get to go there? <laughs> who's do, in the house? Who's in the house? <laughs> what do we do? Burke Nihill, what is Titans House? <laughs> Can you give just a 30,000 foot view that lets the OT people know what it is? Absolutely. At, at, at its base level, it's a stadium experience center. There is a complete paradigm shift uh, from the current Nissan Stadium to the new Nissan Stadium in terms of what it feels like, in terms of the experiences that are available. So we have built a separate space in the Germantown neighborhood of Nashville that uh, brings that to life as much as you can in a, a smallish space. Uh, so you'll see design features that are reminiscent of the new stadium. Um, there is an audiovisual experience that you can walk through and, and really feel and sense what this new stadium is going to feel like. Um, it, we, we went so far as to build out an exact to the inch replica suite uh, in this space. Uh, there's a beautiful model. Uh, who, who spends as much time as they did on a model like that? It must have been somebody who was really good at Legos growing up or something. <laughs> but it's, it's really impressive. I mean, it would. If it was sitting in this space right here, it would we could all sit inside of it. It's so big, um, so it's it's an opportunity to interact with what this what this building is going to be. That uh, is going to be the the new home of the Tennessee Titans. So, what can people do if they have been invited? Did they receive an email? If people want to experience Titans, House? yes, we are proud of the plan we came up with. I'm not sure there's an exact perfect right answer, but uh, as you can imagine, there are literally tens of thousands of people that are wanting to come through and get a sense of what the stadium is, look into the possibility of, of, of becoming a part of the new stadium with, with, a, with a personal seat license uh, or, or some other way. 
And, and so we've had to order that. We have a huge staff over there. There's 20 plus people that work there every day that host people and, and help walk them through and, and show them what's available. Uh, we've structured it in three waves. Uh, we're currently in wave number one. And so people can right now go to uh, newnissanstadium.com and, and express an interest in, uh, in becoming a part of the wait list. And, and getting an invitation. Existing season ticket members don't need to do that. We, we are uh, gonna be in touch with, with all of them we already have and we'll continue to be in touch with them about when their opportunity to come through Titan's house uh, would be. But we're expecting that we're gonna have these appointments for probably the next three years. So if somebody hasn't gotten an invitation right now, please just be patient, we'll uh, eventually get to you. Um, what we are doing in wave one is, is focusing on premier memberships. So that is uh, the, the clubs and more premium experiences. Waves two and three, uh, we'll get to the reserve seating. How has wave one gone? It has exceeded expectations, Mike. Uh, I, I think our, our fans who've had an opportunity to come through have, have really been uh, blown away by the, the Titans House experience, which really isn't just about the Titans House, but it is this close encounter with what this new stadium is gonna be. And uh, I think there's a, there's a different depth of understanding about what's really coming here for the Tennessee Titans and, and, uh, and Nashville and, and Titans fans. You can tell that we have moved into bigger phases of building this stadium and getting this project going. If for no other reason, if you're driving down I-24 around downtown Nashville, there's a giant hole in the ground. And a bunch, bunch yeah, of dirt. And a bunch of dirt yeah. everywhere. Burke, how much of an effort was it to dig a stadium-sized crater just in the earth? I mean, I can remember when the, there was a, a video someone sent around of the, that first uh, um, backhoe getting into the, into the, the asphalt. Um, and it's been now 23,000 truckloads Ooh. of dirt that have been moved off of this site. And that doesn't include the, the pile that's still sitting there that we'll, a lot of it we'll use to backfill uh, as, as the construction continues. I, you see why it's such a massive effort. Um, it is... Uh, we have a really impressive team that's working on it. Kellen DeCourcy is, is our project executive uh, internally with the Titans. Tennessee Builders Alliance is a great group of contractors who are pulling it all together for us. And uh, man, I, I knew this was gonna be a big deal, but when you actually stand and look at the scale of that, I actually took Amy um, uh, into the stadium yesterday and we went up to, to one of the ramps uh, on the 300 level to really get a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a massive, massive project that is, is fun coming, you know, seeing, you know, come out of the ground and, and, and come to life. So if I'm driving by and I can safely look, right. <laughs> what should I want to see? As you're driving by, you're gonna, you're probably not gonna get that great of a view because we've got, we've got scrim and trailers and mounds of dirt. But especially for people who are coming into the stadium over the next few months, there are all sorts of opportunities to get bird's eye view. Uh, you can see from the, the East Club, you can see from the ramps on the, on the East side. And one of the things that's really neat for me to look at is you can start to see the shape of the building starting to, uh, to, to take form and can just start picturing, you know, kind of what the concourses are going to be like. And it's, it's wider. You can start to picture that rectangle space that's the front door of the building. You can look closely and see where the boundaries and borders of that uh, is going to be. That's today. That's this week. Um, as the season goes along, what I'm being told by our, our construction team is, by the end of this season, I mean, it's gonna look a whole lot like an actual building. So you're not gonna have to use your imagination all that much at all. It's, you're, gonna, you're gonna look from the current stadium and you're gonna see something that looks a whole lot like this new building is gonna look like. So we got a big hole, we got a lot of dirt, now what? We're gonna continue to, uh, to you know, come out of the ground. You're gonna see pylons coming up and, and, and everything else, but it's, it, it's about just continuing to get it right, Mike. This is not something that you ever want to take your eye off the ball on. It, there's still some, some design decisions that we're continuing to make. We are trying to make sure that uh, everyone in Nashville who wants an opportunity to work on this project has an opportunity to work on this project. We recently had a, uh, a ribbon cutting for a, a workforce uh, development project that we, we have underway. There was a story uh, from this, this ribbon cutting, a, a gentleman named Jason. And Jason was a teacher. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, one of his uh, students passed away and he uh, spiraled a little bit and ended up homeless. Uh, Jason heard about the new stadium project, heard about this workforce opportunity. Jason showed up at, at this trailer, uh, was taught how to use power equipment, was taught how to, to be a part of this construction project. And Jason sees a totally different trajectory of his life 
because of this new stadium project and doing a little bit of this thought work on the front end and connecting somebody like Jason with the opportunities to build this stadium. And I just pictured Jason, you know, 30 years from now driving by, looking at that stadium and telling his grandkids, you know, your grandpa worked on that building. Uh, so we're, we're still, we're continuing to focus on all that. This is such a cool opportunity. We got to get it right. But there's also uh, these, these other things that come along with it that if we really continue to invest and don't take our eye off the ball, it can be an even more special thing for Nashville. Now you mentioned that workforce center, and I know that that's something that we've opened recently and you kind of touched on the ways that it can help with this stadium project. Really, this stadium is designed to be a touch point for the community, not only once there's football, but right now today. What are some of the ways that this new stadium is already impacting that part of Nashville and Middle Tennessee overall? Yeah, we, we've talked about this stadium being the people's house. That's who we are as an organization. We, we talk about our mission statement all the time, win, serve, entertain. And so when you build a building like this, you, you, want, it, you want to win. You want it to be a great building. You want people to be proud of this building. You want it to be a building built for home field advantage. Uh, you definitely want it to, to be a place that we can serve the community. We want it to be a place that's used all the time by the community to make this community a better place. And then obviously we're gonna juice that thing for all the entertainment opportunities <laughs> we can for the things we're doing today and things we haven't done before, you know, Final Fours and, and Super Bowls and, and, and that sort of thing. We're gonna throw a hat in the ring and, and think we'll win some of those. But uh, on that serve piece, uh, it just takes a lot of intent it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of strategy. We've got people like Adolfo Birch and Jahari Matthews and Haley Davidson who are really, uh, they, they deeply understand this community and, and are invested in this community, understand the opportunities in this community. And, and we just keep looking for more opportunities. We talk about, we, we have 12,000 uh, square feet of space uh, that is going to be a community center space. Um, it's going to be actually one of the first floor plates that's built in the building, which um, I think is, uh, convenient really I think it's a it's but also it's, apropos but it's apropos right it it's it, it's the first thing that's going to be coming out of the ground is the place that's going to be used by this community uh to to, to invest in our neighbors do you feel it I mean it's been a year of you know battling to get it done to get the money to get everything together to bid out processes to break ground now you've certainly broken ground you got a big hole and a lot of dirt and steel starting to go in the ground. Does it all start to feel real for Burke Nihill now? Yeah, I, I, uh, the groundbreaking was a, was a real moment for me personally. I mean, this is, this is clearly about Amy Adams Drunk and the Titans organization and our fans. Um, but, you know, on a personal level, I, I, I went back and looked and the first email that I sent about needing to find a, a new path forward uh, relative to the stadium was in 2018. 2018, we recognized that there, there was something that had to be done and rather than stay in the, the, the current course. And so just so many people put in so much effort and um, you know, woke up in the morning and it was a big part of their days for so long. I mean, it still is. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the groundbreaking, it was this, this opportunity to see so many of those people in the room. And the, it was so humbling on behalf of this organization to see how many people from so many different corners of Nashville and Tennessee care so deeply about the Tennessee Titans, about Nashville, about Tennessee, and that there was this, this effort where so many people came together to make this real. Uh, it was really special. And now in the weeks that have followed, um, it's, I mean, it's happening, right? This, there's, there's, it's a massive, massive project that's coming out of the ground. My parents hadn't, hadn't been back to Nashville for a while and uh, they, they drove down I-24 and they, they know how much we've, we've all invested in this and uh, just couldn't stop talking about the scale of the project and, and how after all of these years, it's real. It's, there, this is, there's going to be a new stadium uh, in Nashville. It's gonna be, I think, one of the special venues in the world and it is the home uh, of the Tennessee Titans. Burke, we are so thankful for your time and we've touched on a lot of things, but before we let you go, we have to know what you are the most excited about for the upcoming Titans season. You know, every time, you know, middle to end of July, I mean, it's just, it's, it's one word, it's, it's football. I, I think we, we do so many cool things in this community and it's especially true now that we're working on a new stadium. Um, it, it all matters so much for us, for the community, for our fans. But at the end of the day, we're a football team. 
And there is just a juice and an energy as, as the players are back in the building, as you're anticipating things like this Saturday uh, with, with the event at the stadium. That the first time the, the players come out in their uniforms, you see, you see rookies and free agents for the first time in a Titans uniform. Uh, and there is, there is a, definitely a feeling this, this year in particular, there's a newness, there's a freshness. So I'm just so excited to watch that team uh, get out on the field. You know what I'm excited about? What, Mike? Selling tickets. And ah. SeatGeek <laughs> is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. Well done. Not one of your best, but I'll give <laughs> it to you. Not one of my best? Yeah, it was fine. Kind of a natural seg? Yeah, it was I little. was okay. I was, I, Thank you. I thought yeah, it was, it was great. Right. Thank you. It was okay. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think the president's opinion is more important than yours. I know. Uh, remind you, <laughs> Saturday at Nissan Stadium, open practice for everybody, totally free. We have two open practices here at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park, August 8th and August 15th. But we have limited space here, so that's going to be tight. We got all kinds of space this Saturday at Nissan Stadium. 11 a.m., open practice, lots of great things going on. You do need a ticket. Again, it's free. Your ticket is free. TennesseeTitans.com slash training camp. TennesseeTitans.com slash training camp. I bet you're going to get a lot of stadium questions there. I'll bet so, and I'm excited to answer them. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Yes. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. It's we always a pleasure. You. Good stuff. Burke Nyhill, Titans President and CEO. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTT.